County for this video I'm going to go over all of the modules that I have loaded for my game that I have up and running at the same time. So I'm going to do this briefly, give a brief description over each module. I currently have 78 modules loaded on my game that I run pretty much at all times. Some of them don't really get used all that much, while some of them get used non-stop. But let's get started. So first one's about time. There's some modules with uh, MIDI quality of life and dynamic active effects that need about time to be activated to be able to use the effects to turn on and off. So it's mandatory for certain things. Active Auras is a great module for doing auras for characters such as paladin or sorry, you know, such as uh, paladins and anything but like clerics that have any type of aura effect. Also for special spells like Crusader's Mantle that create a certain effect that is active on the character that moves around with them. Ambient Doors is a cool module that allows you to create a door sound whenever a door is opened and closed. Uh, it's a really nice effect, uh, and also whenever a door is locked, it'll create a like a lock sound, and then it'll do a prompt to say, "Hey, this person tried to open the locked door." Auto Complete Whisper is a nice module that allows a character to just type for W and then space, and it will automatically pop up every character that you need that's in the game that you can whisper to to save you a little bit of time. Animated Automations uh, uses token magic effects and applies certain animation spells to automate to make it a little bit faster. You can customize them to do it yourself, and this will also automatically just apply some of the default token magic effects to particular spells. Some of these I customize myself personally. Sometimes I'll turn them off. So if I don't want to, if I want to customize myself, then sometimes I'll disable this. Uh, the Bailey Wikis are a Patreon that I follow. He makes very customized modular maps that you can drop and plug and play multiple items and create various scenes. Excellent Patreon to follow. If you don't, I would highly recommend it. He can save you a lot of time and effort being able to make certain scenes and make things a little bit more, especially on the fly. He makes a lot of very generic runes and things that you can create a whole map on with just moving and dropping a couple things and he creates them to set them up as actors or he just pre-generates a scene for you to be able to use and it's, it's it's very good I can't go into too much detail but I, I would follow him. Uh, better rollable tables create some new tables for you able to roll from uh, I use, use it for mainly for loot and things like that. Calendar weather is this little small icon down here uh, also uses about time to make this work. Uh, in my other game, I actually went through and customized every single day of the week. I've been lazy and I haven't done this one yet. I'll do it eventually. Chat portraits allows your character's sheets to see their faces in the chat window whenever they pop up. So they'll see their name whenever they talk. So it makes it a little bit more personal. Combat focus actually adds the combat tracker uh, it actually puts the chat window in the combat tracker. I love this because I pretty much just constantly stay in the combat tracker. So whenever I create an encounter, I don't ever have to go and flip back and forth. I can literally leave everything on this single tab at all times. I love it. Combat utility belt. I've made a video going over this in detail before. Several other people have made videos going over this before. Uh, best thing about it is being able to create conditions. Uh, in my condition lab, I have various effects that I do that I apply. Uh, simple things like bark skin for NPCs. Uh, I have a person who has a sword of wounding, uh, major armor effect, disguise self, haste, all these effects. I just toggle them, toggles the effects. Compendium folders makes makes your life easier here. Does this simple effect here, makes all the folders separated to make it easier to condense and doesn't look so, uh, so clustered. Uh, dynamic scene enhancement. Uh, makes it easier to be able to toggle back and forth between the scenes a little bit easier. Uh, dice so nice uh, creates the effect of being able to have dice pop up on your thing. So one thing I did like about uh, Fantasy Grounds is the being able to roll a dice and it kind of created on the screen in the little chat window uh, that does this for you. Uh, there's another module that allows you to be able to customize them the way that they look. Down here is difficult terrain. Setting this up will allow it so your characters, if they are moving with the control drag options of moving a character such as this drow here, let's do a drow. So if he's moving here and you're 
moving him forward and he's gonna go here and if there's terrain it'll stop him to show okay you can't go over this based on the height uh, it's kind of a pain to set up but it's very effective if you're really wanting your characters to have to navigate through the screen and move certain ways uh, D&D 5e helpers creates a lot of various effects uh, wild magic is a really big one it really helps with characters having to not really worry about recharging uh, your ability rolls it automatically do those for you it can activate uh, regeneration if you have enemies that constantly have things that are going to regenerate at the end of every turn or the beginning of every turn helps a lot with that kind of things D&D 5e UI is my customized display setting I literally just made a video talking about that dynamic active effects is probably one of the if not best module on the entire game uh, being able to create effects for your characters to be able to automate a lot of things makes my life a bajillion times easier my character on mine that is a paladin has more effects on any character that I had to code on anybody else and it was a pain but they work and she's super easy to deal with now that everything's automated. Dynamic illumination gives you some additional options for lighting so you can create a dusk like a dawn and, and in addition to being able to have day and nighttime mode. Easy target allows you to be able to uh, click a button to be able to uh, select somebody so for me, I have it set to open oh, the wrong mode uh, to uh, Alt and click on the character. Uh, makes your life a little bit easier to being able to click on someone on and off. FX Master is primarily for scenes uh, and being able to change the effects and create some weather uh, scenes like this. So this one, I have a smoke and ember one. So whenever I have a town that's on fire or anything like that, this is kind of like the I use. I usually tone down the smoke a little bit depending on the situation but it's got some really, really cool effects. Uh, the GM screen is a fun little module that will create basically the equivalent of a screen that you would do, and you could be able to drag and drop things from the journal to create additional notes. So if there's certain things that you need to be able to go back and forth and check on, you can set it there without having to keep tabs open at all times. You can just set everything up in the GM screen and done. Uh, hey, wait's a great module for if you have some players that kind of go outside of an area that you don't want them to be able to go yet uh, you can create a area on the map that will not let them go any further uh, and it makes them have to stop and address to you before they can before they can go uh, this is the module right here so basically you would draw a box out set it up it has they have certain animations so if you wanted to pop up something or pop a question mark so if you want them to navigate over to an area and they get over to uh, get this guy here so if he's gonna move over here and you want to block off an area and it won't do it because I'm not the player but if he stops on this it'll stop everything it'll pause the game and everything will kind of go to him so it makes everyone be like oh what just happened so it's got some cool effects like that. Uh, in addition to that, I have the Innocent Looting, which I just made a video on just a little bit earlier tonight. Uh, this one, I'm not sure exactly what it does, but it was a dependency for something else, so that's why it's on here. Lib Wrapper has now become very dependent on a lot of modules, so you're pretty much going to need this for, I think, Dynamic Active Effects and Cove, uh, like the Combat Utility Belt use it, and I think it's something else use it too. It pretty much is just going to be needed on everything now, but it's got a bunch of little effects that I really don't know, and I don't really go into it. Loot, NPC, uh, loot Sheets NPCs is how I have been making my merchants. Um, it's still, to me, just the easiest way to do it. I have, what I'll typically do is if I have an NPC that's going to be a character that's going to walk around and additionally be a shop, when they're in their shop, I'll have them, you know, be in this mode and then whenever I have them just be a normal character I create two of them and I just have one in parentheses for the shop so whenever I have a, a person for that in addition to that you can also create an item to be like a treasure chest or something like that so you know you can you can put items and stuff like that uh, is another thing that you can do you can create a character as just a loot sheet uh, magic items allows you to be able to make certain effects on items that allow it to have useful abilities so let's say you have a item which I don't know if I have any of the players on it right now 
but say this necklace of intellect, you can create it and create, if it has a spell attached to it, like if you had like a circlet of blasting, you could add the circlet of blasting, the ability of being able to do the scorching ray uh, on this, and you apply it, and then whenever it, it'll add the spell to your spell book. Uh, and then you can set it up for like a one-use item, things like that. I'll make a video on going in detail of how to set up and make magic items. I can't remember if I've done one past about, I'll do one. Merchant NPC sheet is another way that you can do uh, setting up loot and creating character sheets, but I was trying it earlier tonight and it wasn't working very well. Uh, mess is a way to also add spells to, uh, or add effects to spells. So if you say wanted to give a special effect uh, or a special animated effect to that, that's what creates this texture template. Um, uh, it's going to create a texture template for that spell, and then it'll add this little uh, ability able to do that with the with the mess applicate or the mess module. Uh, in addition to that, you have mini quality of life, which is my next favorite one besides the dynamic active effects, and that allows you to be able to speed up combat significantly. Uh, I have made a video of that before in the past. Uh, minimal UI was another one I had made a video on earlier tonight that kind of creates the additional options to be able to, you know, minimize the control and, you know, make your scenes a little bit more broad, especially if you have characters that, or you have players that are playing like laptops and don't have a lot of screen real estate. Amongst little details, I'm going to do a video on it later. It's got so many little things then to talk about. Scene navigation creates the bar up here that you know, allows you to be able to cycle through the uh, maps a little bit easier and makes it a little more minimized, and then you can actually remove it from the screen if you don't want it. Multi-level tokens allows you to be able to raise and create uh, assets on a screen to be able to make and lower options like that. So it's how you can actually make a building have a roof that when they step into it, it goes away whenever they walk in. Uh, for example, uh, using multi-level tokens you can create effects like this so this building has a roof and whenever a player steps into it it will actually remove the roof so it actually creates the effects of that so you can actually create a nice broad scene but still have the n nice ability to have the the building be available to walk in and out of and they still can see and then as soon as they leave it it's as if they walked away from it and then the simulate that's the uh, the door one that Whenever they try to do that, it'll create a door open and closing sound from the ambient doors because I didn't show how that worked earlier. And let me close this one. Uh, we are on the SRD. Uh, that's not sure where that one came from. Uh, Polygot is for adding languages. So in the chat window, a player, whatever they know, uh, will show the available languages that they could talk in and will create the effect of a character not knowing what is being said. Um, I don't really have any examples of it right here. Um, so if they talk and you have a human here, he won't know what, what that says because it's in Elvish. Roofs and overhead tiles goes hand in hand with the multi-level tokens and being able to create this effect that I did with the roofs and the overhangs. Uh, show drag distance will show you if you drag your token it'll show you you know if I go this many spaces simple enough smart doors will actually show you secret doors and actually change the color of them so I sometimes forget a door is a secret door but with smart doors it will actually change the color of a secret door to make it like a black grayed out color that really shows the difference between the two works really well also, Spell Template Manager is another way that you can use to automate spells. Uh, you can uh, use it for various things. It helps set up the spells a little easier, so they shut off whenever whenever you're done using them. Tab Chat Log I really like because the chat window can get really, really bogged down very fast, especially after everyone's rolls and talking, and sometimes you might lose stuff. With this, you'll be able to actually have your rolls in its own separate tab. A person out of character can say, hey, I'm going to go into the bathroom. I usually will have a character, you know, if I forget to click on a character to have that person talk, it'll automatically default to the out of character, the in character one. So whenever the player talks, it will usually default into that one. But I, re I really like it. It really saves the chat window from getting too, too bogged down. 
The furnace is another module that's been around for a really long time. It creates additional macros for you to be able to use. Um, and then there's a couple modules that need the furnace to, to run in the background. Uh, tidy UI, I went over it earlier today. Um, it's actually what creates this nice tab section. Tidy UI sheets is the character sheets, and I went over that earlier. Uh, token action hoods, the heads-up display that allows you to be able to access everything on this character. As soon as you click on it, it'll pop up what, whatever they have access to, the same as if you were in the character sheet. Token attacher is a way to attach effects to a character. Uh, so, in it, for example, I have this character who has Spirit Guardians running. I'm using uh, J2BA's uh, automated special effects for animated spell effects and this is the spirit guardians from that so whenever he moves around it follows with him so uh, he has a special effect that I made for him that whenever he moves into the area uh, he's got a clone apparently uh, whenever he moves around it will uh, he clicks a button it'll apply the effect of spirit guardians whenever he uses that token magic effects also create some special cool effects for certain characters so this character, he uh, if he say casts a spell, uh, fire shield, and we won't use a spell slot, and he's gonna do a warm shield. His character, he's uh, invisible right now, but if he uh, moves around, it'll create that cool effect. But I, I customize it to be able to do this. So whenever he acts as fire shield, but this is just one of the uh, effects that token magic effects can do. Uh, I can make a video explaining how I do that if anyone's interested. And let me end that effect real quick before I forget. And almost done. So turn marker uh, just creates a simple icon around a character to show whose turn it is. You can customize the color. Uh, if you go into this window, you can change, you know, to make it look to whatever you want. Uh, there are, uh, I think there's a couple different icons. There's a way you can announce it to show what's, you know, it'll pop up and say, it's your turn. I don't do that because everyone's pretty, pretty good on my game of, knowing when it's their turn or not universal battle map importer is really cool so if you have a map that you created on something like um, dungeon fog or i'm trying to remember what a dungeon draft or something like that you can use it to import those into the game and it'll actually pre-build some of your maps for you so if they have walls and windows and like that it'll, it'll automatically draw those for you so it can save you some time of having to sit there and hand draw everything yourself uh, voice actor is pretty cool, so if, especially if you talk as your characters and especially you animate some of your NPCs, you can uh, create uh, dialogue for them that you can play for your characters. So uh, I sometimes will pre-record something, especially if I, have a, um, if I have a character that I like to narrate a lot. Uh, and if I can't always remember exactly how I made them sound, you can save a recording with this little button right here. And then if you uh, shift and click, if you click it and you hold shift and click it, it'll play it for your players. So, for example, Oi, welcome to the Stonehill Inn, known for its world famous beaver stew. Uh, so, that's a cool little thing that you can do to be able to help you remember a voice. You're like, okay, I made this guy sound like that. So I'll sometimes, if I know I'm going to plan out a couple people's voices, I'll pre-record a couple line. I'll pre-record a line or a couple phrases in one stretch so I can help myself remember. And then I can, you know, go into that person's uh, voice. Uh, wall height is pretty much what it sounds like. Uh, whenever you create a wall, you can give it a height for example, I don't want to spoil anything if any of my players watch this, so I'm going to find a map that's already been used. So if I say I want this wall to be, you know, 20 feet high, I can go into the wall and I can set the height to be 20 feet. The And then if, say, there is no roof on this building and this wall is 20 feet up in the air, if a character is flying or anything has any elevation, so find a random person that's not uh, anybody of value so this guy is say he somehow is able to levitate up 25 feet up in the air um, and he can now see over that wall because it's now set to a height of 25 but if he goes down he can't see anything past that so he can just see the windows but with this wall he can see completely through it even though there's no window in there and he can actually 
you know, go over it now because it's now a pretty much something he can scale. So pretty cool little effects, uh, very simple. Uh, some modules, especially like the, the Bailey maps that he creates, he does a lot of pre building of his maps and makes them very detailed and he will actually make the walls X amount of height based on whatever it is. But that is just about it. I think that's all the modules that I went over that I have pretty much active during my game at all times. Uh, that's uh, that's going to do it for this one. If you have any questions about anything in particular that you want, uh, you just let me know and I'll, uh, I'll be sure to answer any questions that I can. Alright, have a good day.